one thing we always need to think about is page tunes. Um, one of the scores that we've been doing is a piano score, and if you're playing with both hands and you haven't got the luxury of a page turner, you're not going to be able to... <laughs> Hi guys, it's Editing James here again. Before we get into this uh, bit with Elliot trying to explain page turns on the side of a massive road in a business park in North Cambridge where our printer is, uh, I thought I'd actually just jump in and uh, explain to you uh, what it is we're trying to do with this company, this new venture that I mentioned last time. So we're a music publishing company and for the last three years the company's published my music. We are now going to start publishing music by other composers. And by other composers I mean dead ones and great ones. So Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, Haydn, Schubert, Schumann, etc. Um, and why? Uh, Actually, the best way to explain this is to show you something. Hold on. Right, so if you want to play a Beethoven piano sonata at the moment, then you have two options, really. You can go and buy one of these beautiful editions by one of the great established music publishing companies. Beautiful editions, beautiful high quality, I mean, gorgeous paper, um, well edited, reliable edition, uh, but it costs you an arm and a leg. Or you can go to the internet and download a free PDF. But it's a wild west out there and you don't know what the quality is like. It might be unreliable edition, it might be poor quality in terms of print. And of course you've got to print it out if you want to have it on paper and then it gets crumpled up in your bag or whatever. Um, or you've got to play it from a, an iPad, not everyone has an iPad or something like that. So I think there's basically a gap in the market for affordable high quality scores. Scores which musicians can rely upon to be good enough editions to perform from and study from. Uh, and a decent physical copy that you can keep and will last for a long time and won't be wasted, won't go in the bin. Um, but is also affordable. These publishing companies, frankly, uh, their prices are too high as far as I'm concerned. I don't think they serve musicians well enough. And if you've been following these blogs and you've seen the way we run this business, which is a dematerialized business, people work from home, they work flexibly, remotely, we occasionally get together. And next week in the blog you'll see our weekend away that we had. We have a very low cost base and that means we can produce scores much more cheaply than anyone else. And, um, you know, we've got some prototype here that we've been working on. You can't see it very well on the video, sorry, but it's matte laminate 300 GSM cover. So nice and robust, last in your bag or knocked around in concerts and stuff. And then printing on 120 GSM, kind of slightly creamy paper. The editions themselves that we're going to be using is going to be a mixture of existing public domain scores. In this case, for release, we've got uh, from the original Breitkopf complete Beethoven edition from the 1860s. But we're also going to be doing a bit of our own typesetting. Uh, and then, you know, we're editing it as well. So this is just a mock-up, uh, this one. But we're going to be having an editorial note at the front explaining the music, explaining the edition, giving a bit of background. It's useful, hopefully, for young musicians, performers, and so on. Anyway, um, that's the concept, basically. That's what we're doing. Uh, in this vlog, Elliot and I go to our printers because we have a wonderful printer in North Cambridge and it's great that we can sit down with him and talk about stuff. Elliot and I are massive geeks for all this stuff like paper geeks and ink geeks and page turn geeks uh, and that's what you'll get to see in today's vlog. So without further ado, are you ready to return to the world of the vlog? Hi guys, I'm at Cambridge North now. Um, this is the less attractive of the Cambridge stations, or less attractive parts of Cambridge. Some guys here having arguments about masks. Um, so I'm meeting Elliot. Uh, meeting Elliot here, and we're going to go and meet our printer. Now, if you're a publishing company, what's the one thing you need when you need music to publish? But uh, you need a printer, and uh, we have a fantastic printer. He's based up here, little company. Uh, Elliot and I are going to go and meet him and have a chat about various things we want to do. Um, and you're coming along with us. Just need to wait for Elliot now. Should be here any minute.
Cambridge North recently built. Um, you think of Cambridge as a lovely and pretty place where tourists like to go, right? King's Chapel and all the rest of it. This is not like that. <laughs> this is a sort of, well, as you can guess, in the north of Cambridge, it's a sort of business park, industrial estate. Uh, it's growing. They're building this hotel um, over there at the moment, and there's lots of stuff going up. But yeah, this is the uh, the less attractive end of Cambridge. But that's cool. It's uh, it's nice to have a printer who is in Cambridge. It's a small business. It's a really nice guy. You'll, you'll hopefully maybe you'll meet him. Uh, nice guy and uh, really good to know where your stuff is coming from and also local you know they'll print it it's only a few miles away from Ely so good stuff just waiting for Elliot now it's been a bit held up Eventually. <laughs> hi. Sorry about that. That's right, no worries. He's here. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Where are we? Is it work? Yeah. Right. So we've just been to see Doug at our printers. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Elliot? I, I'm really excited. <laughs> for, um, yeah, at, at the point which we're filming this, um, it's we're sort of a few weeks to maybe a month before we get the first sort of finished product mm -hmm. in our hands. But it, having you know gone looked through a lot of samples, talked through some options, especially with binding and uh, different sorts of paper, it's sort of one step closer to having a first OV score in our hands <laughs> exactly yeah and it, it, it's so nice to be able to go over real details isn't it mm, yeah <laughs> like um i'm gonna point it at you tell, tell them tell them about the um the page turn and the uh the, okay. the, 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 the fold out so um one of the, so one of the things that i um, wanted to think about was especially uh, having an edition that's really really um yeah, easy to use and usable so one thing we always need to think about is page turns um one of the scores that we've been doing is a piano score and if you're playing with both hands and you haven't got the luxury of a page turner you're not going to be able to you're not going to be able to turn the page um, effectively so both on the score production side of you know where i'm working we need to think okay does this person actually have a hand to be able to turn there are all sorts of various rules of how you calculate whether they've got enough time uh, to be able to turn but one solution that especially string players like, because they have to put a bow down and then turn a page, is to actually have a fold-out flap. And it's only by talking to a printer like Doug, who can cut paper to any size, where that's an option for us, which is absolutely great. <laughs> Exactly, yeah, that's brilliant. And I probably picked the worst spot uh, in Cambridge <laughs> right. North to do a little media appearance there explaining page turns with the lorries going past. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, isn't it good to have that level of oh, precision? Go. I think he was, he was talking about down to the, down to the millimetre. Yeah. Uh, of saying, you know, you would fold the page a millimetre, two, three millimetres more. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah try, it's easy to get run over with a camera in your hands. Um, Occupational hazard of vlogging. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like uh, Pompeii, you know, <laughs> yeah. so, someone, <laughs> body of someone with a <laughs> vlogging camera in their hands yeah. struck down by the volcano. Yeah. Um, one of the big things we're trying to do mm. is create products that are good for musicians to use. Yeah. And because we're both musicians and we're both, we're both teachers and we're both composers, and um, we've had to struggle in all sorts of different contexts in the, the yeah. years we've been on this mortal coil with yeah. page turns and students and um, all, all these kinds of practical things. I think by this, by this point in our lives, we've got some ideas of how it should work. <laughs> <don't we? laughs> yeah, it's like, um, so one of the, the things that I end up doing a lot of as well is, um, is you know, audio production, same way the video production mm -hmm. things. And good score design is a bit like good audio production mm. you only notice it when it's not there and yeah. when it, something's a bad product or it's bad audio design and it doesn't sound right and you're sitting there thinking this shouldn't be like this we should hopefully have enough experience and have experienced enough 
of other people's mistakes to be able to do this well. <laughs> So, all very promising. And isn't it nice also to go have a printer? We can go and see. He's just a few miles down the road from Ely. Um, we can, you know, so many businesses nowadays, you just can't speak to anyone, whatever. Um, he's, uh, he's, he's very chatty, isn't he? He's great. Yeah. Especially he's from the northeast as well. Which, yes, uh, I was outnumbered, I well. outnumbered by these. Uh, these <laughs> I shouldn't say Newcastle, should I? <laughs> no, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, good, good, good trip, and uh, we're going back to Cambridge now.